Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us on the Fair Compare Weekly Podcast. This is episode number 51. My name is Rick Sini, CEO of FairCompare.com. And I'm Ann McDermott, the editor here at FairCompare.com. And today we are going to talk about Sully the Movie, which, uh, gosh, I hope it's good. It comes out in theaters this week. And also we're going to be talking about what airlines have gotten right and wrong in one of the latest roundups of statistics from the Department of Transportation. And one of my favorite things to do on the podcast is take these customer questions. So please send them, continue to send them. We'll talk about where to do that here in a minute. And also learn about our event of the week from our app, Adventurist, mm -hmm. Du Chocolat, which is uh, sounds pretty cool. So we'll have to Maybe. give you the first part of that and uh, tell you where it's at here, here shortly. Let's talk uh, Sully the movie. Sully refers to a U.S. Airways captain. Yeah, you know, I remember when this happened and, you know, essentially dropping a plane onto the Hudson River and saving everybody. I do also have memories of people, you know, bringing all of their carry-on luggage out onto the plane. Not a good idea, by the way. Um, you know, leave it. It, it. it doesn't matter. You are on a plane that's on water and it's not meant to be on water. <laughs> Get out quickly. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, I watched the trailer of the movie a, a little while ago, and it, as I recall it, and I know you were sort of giving me a primer on this before, you know, there was a little bit of controversy afterwards as he yeah. became the rock star, and then you had the government jumping in with the FAA saying, oh, wait a minute, he's not such a rock star, and sort of some backbiting between them all, and then finally in the end saying, yeah, sort of whatever, it, okay, fine. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, ultimately they basically said, yeah, you did do an amazing thing. They called it the miracle on the Hudson, as I'm sure you remember. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, it, it was, if you ask me. Yeah, no, I, I, it's like every time there's some form of a flight-oriented movie, airline, airplanes, I have to go see it, you know. The trailer with... Uh, the one that, uh, you know, does the vertical change with the pilot that may or may not have been drunk. <laughs> I think that was Denzel Washington. Flight, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, it's like, I have to go watch these things. So I'm, I'm at, and I love Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is probably one of the best actors uh, in the history. And, and we also just got back from uh, Florence where they had the other movie, which is Dan Brown's book that Tom Hanks uh, was part of as well. So I'm looking forward to that one coming out. So it looks like Tom Hanks has a couple things coming out here shortly. Do you think they're going to show that Sully movie on a plane? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> they have snakes on a plane. Why not Sully on a plane? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, airlines, what they got right and wrong. And we've got the latest statistics from the Department of Transportation. And there's always a couple of months lag. And these actually come from... Right. Uh, from uh, June of 2016, and they compare them with June from a year ago, and they also compare them with May, and um, complaints are down, which kind of surprised me. Yeah, no, I guess it doesn't surprise me too much because, well, I think you would have had a lot of complaints there at the tail end of the spring when they we saw those those 90 minute to two hour lines at O'Hare Airport yeah. on TV yeah. and and sort of the the precursor saying the world's about to come to an end because we're going to have 90 minute lines all throughout the summer. Um, somebody finally got some common sense, chopped a few heads of the people that were in charge. Uh, the airlines and the airports all pulled together uh, and apparent and got everything down to under 10 minutes over the summer. So uh, you know, I don't. I think probably you had a little boost there in uh, that sort of late uh, April time frame, and probably not so many over the summer because it wasn't too bad. And, you know, the number of canceled flights was down and probably a, a lot of people think, well, yeah, June, of course, you know, but I, I think a lot of people forget that thunderstorms can be so much oh, worse yeah, than no, any no, sort no. of wizard. Not only blizzard. thunderstorms, and we've had a few computer glitches <laughs> along oh, here yeah. too that, uh, that canceled some flights there. So I'm surprised, to be honest, that, that that's down now. Now, this goes through June and some of these other issues that occurred after June. So I got a feeling we're going to see a little bump in those numbers here coming up for the second half of the 2016. Uh, I also noticed that uh, on-time arrivals continue to get better. Um, and sometimes that has to do with Mother Nature, but up about three, 3 and a bit percent. So that's not too bad. 
lost luggage. Uh, you know, the weird thing, and every time I see this stat, it's like only three in a thousand, or three point four in a thousand, or two point eight in a thousand. Why is it when I take my golf clubs, the only time I check, do they get lost? <laughs> How can I possibly be? I'm gonna go buy a lottery ticket next time I check it out <laughs> because I'm gonna win. I think. Okay. I'm all for whatever reason. I am like bucking the statistical norm every time I fly. We're going to leave your golf clubs for now and begin with a question from a customer. And this is Teresa Ann in Tampa. And she says that she heard you, Rick, on uh, AM Tampa Bay Radio. And her question is about traveling from Tampa Bay to Ireland next summer. And she says it's a, a family of four. They have open dates. They haven't, you know, got a plan set. And she, she says, you mentioned certain dates to travel and certain dates to buy tickets. Give me some suggestions on airlines and any other hints. So what do you have for Teresa Ann in Tampa? Sure, yeah. No, I actually was just on Tampa this morning again this morning, so hopefully she heard me this morning as well. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so a um, couple things. First of all, she said summertime, right? Summertime is going to be the yep. most expensive time to buy to Europe. Um, I don't have a crystal ball right now to tell you whether or not oil prices will be at $30 a barrel or $100 a barrel. So let's assume for the sake of this argument, it stays somewhere between 40 and 50 where it's been uh, recently. Okay. Um, so let's assume that and there's not some big jump in oil prices. If it, there's a big jump in oil prices, you need to go ahead and get that ticket a little bit earlier than normal. Now generally you want to start shopping for any transatlantic, in this case, or transoceanic ticket if you're going to Asia over the Pacific, uh, about five months ahead of time. If you're buying, if you're out there shopping any earlier than five months, there's not a lot of activity, the cheaper prices aren't dumped in with inventory. Uh, so that's when you want to start shopping. You don't want to buy it any later than about 45 days before departure. So it's a little bit different than domestic. We've talked about domestic before, which is about three months out all the way to about one month. You don't want to buy it. So a little bit uh, earlier there. Now, sales are a little more complicated uh, for international. We don't see that same sort of Tuesday afternoon pattern that we see for domestic sales. Uh, but we do see some sales from time to time. A couple things that dictate the price of these tickets. The average fuel surcharge to um, Europe has been hovering between $400 and $450 round trip. Taxes and fees around $155 to $160, a little bit more if you're transiting uh, through London Heathrow because they've got a little extra tax there. So you're looking at about $600 at the, as a baseline. Now, Ireland is one of the cheapest countries to fly into. That's good news. And that includes out of Tampa. Um, typically, you'd, just, you'd be flying out of Tampa, connecting in New York, for example, or potentially connecting, I guess, they might have some connections out of Miami, which is a hub. They might go Atlanta if you're in Delta. Um, you might go uh, DC, depending on what airline you are. Um, so, and Boston also has Aer Lingus to it, so if you want to sort of split ticket, you could do that. But generally, you know, for that summertime ticket, you don't want to shop this year, you want to start early next year. Now, there are some special dates involved there. Now, May has sort of a jump up rate. Clearly, summertime is past May. And then in mid-June, there's a jump up rate. So if you can leave before the middle part of June, and, and I don't know exactly what time it is next year, we'll be pu publishing that number when airlines actually have their season rules on their airfare. Um, it'll tell us when they, they that little price jump occurs, but early June is always good if you can do that. And if you're, if she it sounds like she's wide open there, um, on her date, so that's a good time to go. And by the way, it's, the weather isn't so hot in some places as well. So early June and, and my other favorite, which is September travel, which is after the summer season and cheaper, uh, and the weather's better there too. But unfortunately, kids are in school, so it makes it tougher for some people. Um, and a couple things too, you want to leave if you can Monday through Thursday. They have what's called weekend and midweek pricing. Yeah. Uh, weekend is called peak pricing. Typically anywhere between 20 to, I've seen it as high as $40 each way more if you go Saturday to Saturday, for example, versus Tuesday to Tuesday, for example, right? I would uh, just add w one more thing that, that you have mentioned to me, and it, it's uh, check the prices to Dublin and check the prices to Shannon. Uh, usually, yeah, sure. uh, often they're pretty similar, but sometimes I've seen dramatic 
uh, price differences. Yeah, so. no, you definitely have to compare, and it depends on where your destination is there. Um, if you can stay away from transiting through London Heathrow, you'll save a few extra dollars there, too. So you're from a connection standpoint, there's a little more money involved connecting there as well. Um, so look, I mean, it's, it's one of the five cheapest countries to fly into Europe. Ireland, um, the Nordic countries, start starting you know sort of northern with Finland, Denmark, uh, Sweden, uh, for example, um, and uh, also the Germany as well is in that list as well as Spain. Uh, so yeah. with those particular countries, and sometimes last year we saw Switzerland jump out, and then it's sort of jumping back in this year. So that typically rounds out. Unfortunately, that doesn't include and the the top three destinations everybody wants to go to, which is London, Paris, and Rome. But again, those tend to be more expensive. So Ireland's a great place to visit. Best golf courses around, by the way, is if you like golf, but don't check your bag. Well, you have to so if you're taking your golf bag. Just rent clubs. You're good to go. Um, so uh, you can see I'm uh, I'm I'm still <laughs> venting about my golf clubs. <laughs> I'm sorry okay. about that. Well, uh, thank you, thank you for a great question, Teresa Ann. And uh, if anybody else has a question, please send it to Rick. Customer dot service at faircompare.com. Yeah, and definitely sign up for alerts on our site. If you sign up uh, just for that oh, route, yeah. we'll send you some notes too. So don't forget to sign up for alerts. You'll get a feeling for the price point. Um, and, it, and it's always going to uh, help you get, sort of understand where things are. Essentially, we're going to be shopping in the background for you every hour on the hour to check out those prices. And finally, let's talk about the adventurist event of the week, uh, Salon du Chocolat. I am Chocolate. the world. I cannot. I can't even. I can't do these romantic languages. You, you did it fine. Salon du Chocolat. Um, but, it means uh, chocolate. There's a chocolate festival. <laughs> and I'm in, by the way. You know, yeah. I, I'm more of the sort of Belgium, Switzerland milk chocolate thing, to be honest. People treat, keep trying to sneak in uh, the dark chocolates, but I'm a milk chocolate kind of guy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at the photos as we sit here uh, on my monitor, and I'm hungry. <laughs> so well, can we please stop this conversation within 45 seconds? We will. We will. But... Uh, just, just another thing, if if there is such a person that hates chocolate, which I can't believe, this is taking place in Paris. So you can't hate both chocolate and Paris. So there's something for everybody. Right. And it is the tail end of October, um, all the way through the nice. first day in November. So um, not very expensive, uh, about for 14 euros, which uh, the dollar has been fairly strong. So I, I'm assuming you get samples with that 14 oh. euros. So, um, uh, so absolutely. Uh, that's on my list of things to, um, well, it depends if I can get to where I want to be with my <laughs> Maybe someday I'll go to the Salon du Chocolat. But check that out at The Adventurous. You can look at it on our website. You also can download the native app. We've added several new locations and are updating all the ones uh, from last year that, that people didn't go to. So be sure to download that on the Google Play Store or on uh, the App Store. Just type in Fair Compare. You'll find it also Adventurous, E-V-E-N-T-U-R-I-S-T. Thanks, Rick. Hey, thanks, Ed.